All right, and welcome back to part seven of Elden Ring, the ultimate guide. If this is the first time you're using one of our guides, we recommend that you watch the video linked in the description. And if you have any tips of your own for this area, put them in the pinned comment, and then that way people can check that for extra tips, and the guide can keep growing. But otherwise, we're at Learning of the Lakes, and this is Thops. So, Thops is the second sorcery merchant, and what he sells is pretty much all garbage. You'd have started with some of it if you picked the astrologer to begin with, and he sets you on a little journey to go out and grab the glintstone key. Now, this is how you get access to Raid Lucaria, the legacy dungeon, or one of the legacy dungeons of Hollyonia. And while you're inside, you'll grab a second key, you can bring it back to him, and you'll complete his quest shortly thereafter. Now from here, we're going to head out into the graveyards just above, and I believe there's a scroll in one of them. Yes, um, but for now, just exhaust Thops' dialogue, and that'll be him for now. I mean, that's kind of the case for most NPCs. You bump into them, speak to them until you can't speak to them anymore, or until they repeat their dialogue anyway, and then that's you. But now we're heading up to these, this other side of this kind of gorge that you can run down, and um, I think it's like a warming stone or something up here. Hey! I'm so smart, Well man. remembered. And yeah, just ignore these guys, but... These guys, they're in the graveyard area. You can encounter some skeletons. And uh, these particular skeletons, if I can find them. Uh, so, these ones will be the skeletal bandits. Uh, that Maybe the glavemen. Um, maybe the skeletal mages. Now, running through here, uh, we're just going to grab uh, another a, a cookbook. Glintstone Crafting's one. And just the ignore all those enemies. Glintstone Craftsman one. But yeah, don't bother with any of them. But the point is, is that the skeletons can drop the weapons that they're using, or some of the times are shields. So the skeletal soldiers can drop the Sun Realm shield. They all will drop you in bone shards. Uh, the bandit's curved sword, the executioner's great axe, the glaive. Uh, aye, so that's all the stuff the skeletons can uh, can get you. But um, just picked up another cookbook from this merchant here. Um, yep. And he's the other one I was talking about in an earlier part, where I said you can get a lantern in the second place, and just above him, uh, I think it's a Runok? Ah, no, Sacrificial Twig. Those, so, by the way, they're a, they're a consumable talisman. Um, if you are wearing one and you die, you don't lose your runes on death. Similar to a Ring of Sacrifice from the Dark Souls games. Now here we're up to the map fragment. Try your best to avoid these enemies. They hit you multiple times. They can very easily knock you off torrent. So, this grab the map all fragment. Torrent's... Fault. Yeah, this was all torrent's fault. Like, oh my god. <laughs> so, now we're just heading directly south, essentially. Uh, and this is going to be the first uh, dungeon in this area. Now, it's something we should just quickly mention about the uh, merchants, by the way. If you kill them, they'll drop a bell bearing. And if you give that bell bearing to the twin maiden husks in the round table hold, they will, uh, the twin maiden husks will sell all the stuff that the merchant was selling. So this means that effectively if you go about killing the merchants, you can just get all their inventory into one NPC by doing that. Now we, part of the ultimate guides, we don't ever kill any NPCs unless it's like part of a quest. Um, but I guess we should mention it that that is something that you can do. It's probably your best bet as well, because unlike previous games, killing those merchants doesn't count as a sin, quote-unquote, so you don't need to worry about requesting absolution at a place... Do we visit the uh, Church of Vows later in this episode? Uh, I don't think it's this episode. Right, so in a coming part, we'll be visiting the Church of Vows, and that is where you would get sin washed away. Um, yeah. Similar to how you would have visited um, Oswald in Dark Souls 1. So here we are in, in this uh, cave, um, and it's just a cave, there's a lot of poison enemies in here that have like poison projectiles. Again, you can use the um, the Physic Flask with the health regen tier in it, and then that will uh, allow you to just effectively ignore poison in this area, because you'll be regening the same amount of health as you're losing, so that's all fine. And uh, these mushroom men don't actually drop anything other than mushrooms, I don't think they drop their like their uh, weapon or anything like that. I don't think that's a thing. That no, happens. they don't. So going here, right? Uh, so there's a lot. There's the this poison pool will slow you down when you're in it, and then there's a bunch of bats. So this is like a total trap where you go into that poison pool, and a bunch of bats attack you. Um, so kill the bats first, 
because you really don't you don't want to get swarmed up in this poison pool. It's pretty bad if that happens. I've died multiple times doing that, if you can believe it. And this bat's also That's a little good. bit stronger, seemingly. Yeah, this is another one of the banshee type enemies, the, the sort of harpy that will drop a bigger golden rune when killed. Aye, aye. So as you can see there, we're poisoned, and unless the enemy is hitting us, our health isn't actually going down because we're still under the effect of the health regen physic. You can maybe see it sort of ticking back and forth. So that was the sage set in, uh, in that poison pill. So pack that up, obviously. Um, and then we're we'll just continuing on for the rest of the cave. Uh, this one is a pretty straightforward uh, cave as far as they go. Um, just one of the, the there's a few poison themed caves like this and this is just one of them uh, again the, the flowers will only drop like certain crafting materials the mushroom men will only drop craft materials or like at least they won't drop anything that's like relevant to equipment or anything like that so there's pretty much nothing to say for any enemies in here and the the little statue we just passed is the stake of marica and you can see now an icon that's appeared underneath the stamina bar um, in the same shape as the statue. That means that if we die from this point forward, um, you have the option to spawn back at the stake so you don't have to run back through the entire dungeon. So I think this boss is the it's either one or two clean rot knights. So it's one clean rot knight. And that's very fucking easy because we have ground slam. And this enemy can be pancaked via ground slam, which means it's fucking dead already. It just doesn't know it. <laughs> it can bleed. It if it can bleed, it's weak to the imps, and if it's weak to the imps, we can kill it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, honestly, the imps could probably kill it for you, actually. Um, I mean, all that damage that was just done there—that wasn't us. That was the imp. Um, yep. They're, there you they're go. just nice and easy. so good. They're just so good. If you're not using them, you are handicapping yourself. Now, we got um, an Insignia there. Uh, what does that do? The Winged Sword Insignia is one of three talismans with very similar effects. So it boosts your attack power with consecutive attacks, meaning if you bury your face into an enemy and keep swinging away at them, you will get a progressively increasing buff to your damage. Um, I'm not sure of the exact percentages, but the... Winged Sword Insignia is the weakest of the three. Um, there is also the Millicent's Prosthesis, which you would get by killing an NPC, which we don't do. Um, and you can also get the Rotten Winged Sword Insignia, which uh, you get by completing the quest of that same NPC. Um, that's something we do end up doing. Um, unfortunately, the Winged Sword and Rotten Winged Sword Insignias don't stack, where the Millicent's prosthesis and either of the winged swords do stack. So you kind of miss out on having that boosted damage by doing her quest, but her quest is one of the more extensive and fun and involved ones, so it's worth doing. Here we're coming up to a carriage, we're gonna grab the tree spear, and I think we're just gonna ignore this giant, right? Yeah, fuck it. Now hopefully you were able to at least pay attention to the route that we're taking. We do assume that you don't need vocal directions because you can see where we're going so hopefully you can pay attention enough to you know uh see the direction that we're coming from but now we're just going back down the beaten path because we went we went and if you go uh south that takes you to the carriage now we're effectively going north up the beaten path there is a, a paved path that you can follow that we're doing and there's these balloons and we're shooting them with our arrows again the bow coming in handy to do this because otherwise i don't even know how the fuck you meant to hit them down but um, if you hit the balloons, they'll drop a bunch of marionette soldiers uh, where they land, but you do get a guaranteed gold rune for shooting them down. So that's why we're doing that. And we're just ignoring all the enemies in the field. Fuck them, fuck all of them. You don't need to fight them. Don't get anything for doing it. They're irrelevant. So when we came up that spirit spring, there was a grace. Now we're heading north and to the next grace, essentially. So, aye, that's nice and easy setting grace. But now we're heading west down this hill to these ruins where we will be meeting Irina in a second and if you remember that she was up on the hill when we came out of Stormvale at the end of the last part so now she's moved here and so this is the purified ruins and there's a bunch of uh why is Godric soldiers it is Uku soldiers Real Lucaria soldiers that's it 
Oh, it's Cuckoo Knights. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, Rayla Carrier yeah. Soldiers. So, the Rayla Carrier Soldiers can drop the Lord Sworn Straight Sword. So, the weapons that they're holding, which is the Lord Sworn Straight Sword, the Brass Shield, uh, the Lord Sworn Shield, which is the great shield that they're, they're holding. Um, then they can drop the their armor set, which is the Rayla Carrier Helm, the Cuckoo Surcoat, and the Gauntlets and the Greaves. Now, there's uh, some planks there that we smashed, and we can go down these stairs, and um, uh, in this chest there's the two, two fingers heirloom, and then a Shabriri Grape, which, if you remember, is the item that Irina is looking for. So the two fingers heirloom that we picked up um, is one of a number of heirloom talismans that boost your damage stats, so that's strength, dexterity, faith, and intelligence. Um, this one, the Two Fingers Heirloom, boosts your faith, and it boosts it by five points. So similarly to the Faith Not Crystals here, that would boost your um, faith by ten points, these effects do stack, so you can actually, with only 15 faith, cast incantations that do require 30. So you have ways and means of getting access to things that you shouldn't have. Um, we're here at Arena now, gonna hand over the next grape, and by doing so, she'll... Uh, give you a blessing, and then next time you rest at a grace, she'll move to her next location, and this is a pattern that repeats a few times through all of Leonia, but we'll show you all yeah. of that as and when it pops up. So we're heading sort of northeast, there's a mushroom in this section of the ruins, and then there's also a teleport portal, or whatever the fuck, and this will take us to, I think, outside, yeah, outside Rail Lucaria. So this is the start of Rail Lucaria, the legacy dungeon, so we are just going to grab the grace here means we can warp back here when we need to and then there's also uh, an item here that's just a letter effectively telling you where the key to get in here is but obviously we're going to show you where that is don't go to rail the just yet we're going to do the rest of the learning first because it is a little bit higher level but now we're warping back to that second grace that we got on the beaten path up here and now we are heading east to the edge of this plateau and then down the edge down this hill and there is a, another catacombs, it's an imp one, uh, and we will be just hammering triangle wherever we go to get some, uh, what, tarnished golden sunflowers, we've got some roa fruits, aye. Now, in addition, just quickly, uh, I think there's also a somber smith and stone on a chair down here, maybe a smith and stone too, I'm not sure. Somber smith and stone too, right, okay. So, in addition, when it's, we're talking about the real Lucaria soldiers, they can also drop us, uh, like, some consumables, so they can drop smith and stones, bolts, lord swarm bolts, they can drop the war pick if they're holding it, the heavy crossbow, cuckoo glint stones, and smith and stones. I already said smith and stones, never mind. But aye, uh, they can drop all that kind of stuff. Just heading down here into Cliff Bottom Catacombs, um, you mentioned the imps in this area. Is this the one that also has the omen enemies? Uh, I think it is, yes, yes. Yeah, so as we'd mentioned in a previous part, in um, in the last part, actually, in Stormvale Castle, the omen can drop the weapon that they're holding, so that would be the omen cleaver or the dax, both great options, if you were looking for something interesting to play about with. Um, this is, there's a couple this of notable probably... items in here. Oh, sorry. This is probably the place to farm the omens for that, for the for those items. Here and the subterranean shunning grounds, but the omens in here are going to be a lot, uh, a lot easier. Now, um... Again, the way of defeating the enemies is keep your shield up and then use a guard counter, or rather defeating imps specifically. Um, for some reason, I forgot that for like a bit in this uh, in this catacomb, but fuck it, that is the way to do it. Keep your shield up when they bash the shield, hit R2, and do the guard counter, and then that will stun the imps every time. At least with the Literally katana. Free. Well, yeah, except hit... these guys. Except yeah, the ones these... with the... the... Yeah, except the one with the two-handed sword. Now, the imps uh, yeah. can drop the forked hatchet, the forked greatsword, uh, the imps' heads, which is either the cat, the fang, the long tongue, and the wolf. Um, they drop the one that they, they have, I guess. Smoldering butterflies, glintstone fireflies, fog blooms, mushrooms, and various smith and stones is what the imps can drop. Now, heading down those stairs, there's like a pressure pad here that's like a trap. You can... Um, activate these traps to kind of help you with the imps if you're tactical about it. Uh, that way they become a help and not a hindrance. So, go pressure plates, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, there's not really a lot to this one. It's, um... 
pretty straightforward. Just follow the path as you would expect it to uh, progress. Under here, you'll find the first of the ermine enemies. He's sleeping, so we're going to get a ground slam on him straight away. Um, flattens him, as you would it's... expect. Second one breaks his stance. Um, similar to how we were fighting the Crucible Knights. Just two ground slams, repost. Charge attack. Yeah. Um, pretty run of the mill. Like, omens can be a bit troublesome, especially if they're coming in groups, but one on one, they're not too hard to deal with. Yeah, yeah, and particularly because we have ground slam, that does. Now, this bit's a little bit tricky, just to make a point. Um, if you want to bait this omen down here and fight it individually, because if you were to go and fight it up there, a bunch of imps would also start attacking you, and you don't want to fight imps and an omen. As I said, one on one is definitely preferable. Now, so likewise, Julius... with the um, like with the Crucible Knight, you'll notice that took three Ground Slams to break, and it's because one of them didn't hit with all the attacks of Ground Slam. Yeah, yeah, it, it has like multiple ticks in its animation, I guess, that they kind of have to connect with. Which is kind of why in set like one-on-one, -on -one, um, Lion's Claw does become better than Ground Slam, because it always flattens and always does the same amount of poise. Uh, and also, you can't be staggered out of Lion's Claw, which is fucking it's so good. The fact that you can't be staggered out no matter what attack, there's no unless they grab you, they, they can't hit you out of it. So Lion's Claw is really, really good because of that. But Got obviously, that 600 motion value. Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously Lion's Claw is better on a bigger weapon, so it's less effective if you put it on the katana. So just bear that in mind. So using a stone sword key and getting the uh, Nox Mirror Helm. Uh, it's very random that it's here, I feel, but fuck it. And it's a completely mid item, so that's a bit of a waste of a uh, stone sword yeah. key, to be honest. Yeah. But we need it for the guide, so... <laughs> well, it's not even a waste of stone sword key when you think about it, because you never don't have enough stone sword keys, technically, as long as you pick them all up. So it's actually just a use of a stone sword key. <laughs> I mean... Yeah, I guess, but I think I'd rather just have the stone sword key. I'd rather have a bigger number in my bank account than the than the item. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Instead of just something I'm never going to use. So there's two imps here, and um, you can, as we saw, use the pressure plate to kind of help with that. Although I did get caught behind a pillar, and thus it was a little, a little bit touch and go, I will, I will admit. So just be careful at this point. Because there's also Oof. another fucking one, and we are so close to dying. So close. <laughs> Honestly, I, like, I, I know at this point I was raging. I could just, I can tell, I can tell I would be so <laughs> angry at this point, because that's one fucking imp. Yeah, I do remember this part of the recording process, vividly. <laughs> so that was a good example of the guard counter working perfectly. And there's the scythe. But yeah, fuck that room, and whoever designed that, bastard. Oh, this guy just decided. It's just decided no, you to die. <laughs> yeah, you'd already walked past him. It's not his job. He's meant to pounce on you. He he pounced. You weren't there. So yeah. It was above his pay grade, bro. Exactly. Exactly. Another one's gonna come around this corner. God knows where this one comes from, by the way, because it wasn't on the ceiling. <laughs> yeah. No. So I just <laughs> appeared. But yeah, so that is um, that's it for up here. And now there is a lower section, which you access yes. by dropping off the bottom of this staircase, I believe. But we're going to head back to the Grace first and foremost, just to get a refill on the flasks. Yes, yes. Uh, and I guess spend any runes if we can. Um, always a good idea to do that, by the way, if you if you notice you have a surplus of runes. Better off spent than gone. This so... is true. So just for the sake of quickness, I'm not fighting anything, but yeah, it's... Yeah, that's why. So, heading down the stairs, and now we're going to drop off down at the bottom, where there is some more omens. And there are and actually cool two about... in this room, so be careful with that. Yeah, and the cool, cool thing about Ground Slam as well when it comes to the omens is that grab attack has such a huge wind-up that you can just pancake them out of their grab attack. It's pretty good. Aye, aye. Um, once again, this is a catacomb style dungeon, so you'll notice these glowing white flowers around the place. Those are your glove warts, those are for broken spirit ashes, ghost for um, named spirit ashes, grave for generic mob spirit ashes. Aye. I think that was definitely 
a bit a bit of an unneeded split in distinction personally but fuck it yeah um, so there's a prattling pate so that's just an item that you can use that will uh, picked up a few of these now they essentially just give like a kind of sound emote um, and there's only i think that's that is the no it's not that was wonderful i think it's ever good i think we picked up uh, yeah, um, Your Beautiful, it. no, Your Beautiful is on Mount Gelmir, that comes a lot later. Right, okay. So yeah, there's um, only one Prattling Pate that actually does anything in the single player game. But the point is, is that, I don't know, something something fun to play with, or whatever. I mean, I do like the fact that, because they're effectively the same as the carvings from Dark Souls, right? Yeah. I do like the fact that they did design a character's quest to make use out of one. So it's yeah, not just cool, a yeah. pointless thing that you pick up. Like, one of them does actually have a use. So... Um, uh, weird that it didn't speed this ladder climb up, but otherwise there's another omen here. Um, so just get, get a backstab, fuck it, and then just start ground slamming it. See, we missed that. We, we sort of, like, uh, glanced it with a ground slam, and as a result, it didn't get pancaked. So as a result, I'm now shitting myself. Uh, because I really, really do not want to die this far in the, the fucking cave. <laughs> now, see, if you had a um, maybe a heavier weapon, because we're currently dealing with quite a lightweight weapon class, Katanas, um, when we get the Great Stars, you can actually use um, guard counters pretty effectively. So similarly to the Imps, you can guard counter the Omens to handle them pretty readily, actually. Yeah. Um, we picked up so, the page ashes there, those are the same as the enemies we fought while we were on the Weeping Peninsula. It's not great, I wouldn't bother leveling that one up. Now, pulling that lever allows us to enter this room, which is the boss. So, effectively, if you go down the stairs and just follow the beaten path, that's the items. If you jump off the stairs and follow that path, that's the boss. So that's how you can kind of conceptualise this place. But here it is, we're just it's just another air tree burial watchdog, so um we're just gonna This one's a magically imbued watchdog, but this one has a couple of other tricks up its sleeve. Whoa. So we have one trick up our sleeve and it does the, the job does the job for all of them. So summon the imps, golden bow, get your physic flask on. Now admittedly the, the magic damage will be, you know, either skewed or in your favour or against, so you can Put on the talisman for the magic defense, that's probably not going to be nothing. You can put your shield on that has the most magic defense. Or, you can just go to town on it and just heal through its attacks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now, even though the imps can't inflict bleed on this, they are still good for splitting aggro. Yeah. So, yeah. you saw there, we had an opportunity where we could have healed, we could have drunk a blue flask, could have taken the physic if we wanted, you know, if we hadn't already used it, or... Pot Golden Vow again if it had run out. You so know, the imps are just great us. for creating windows of opportunity. So now we have warped back to that second grace that we got on the, the beaten path, and now we are going to be leveling up our arcane to 12. And now, uh, what is it actually? Where does it go from there in terms of the level up? So after arcane to 12, um, it is literally. Just from here, return to the pattern of increasing your vigor and endurance by five points each. Uh, so we have some spare souls here, so we could, maybe could have leveled up, but otherwise we're picking up the Magic Warriors cookbook from this guy. Um, just so we have it, essentially, because I also need to get all the cookbooks. But now it is uh, making sure that your vigor and endurance is... 45 vigor 40 endurance is what we are now going to so you're just dumping it these stats we're going five each time so five and one five and the other just until we have it uh player preference dealer's choice whatever you will in terms of how you want to level them up but we recommend incrementally putting them up to eventually 45 vigor 40 endurance so head along the beaten path as you saw if you go up the left hand kind of hill um, you get to this place, uh, we're ignoring these enemies, uh, it's just not worth fighting them, because you get, if you try to fight them, this guy just shoots you with spells, and this guy is one of the slightly stronger, um, of the sorcerers in this area. So, 
he would actually be a... Uh... Wind Sage. Sorcerer. Wind Sage, yes. Which I... Do not have, actually, on this list of sorcerers. So they can drop the Academy Glintstone staff. Um, and the distinction between the sorcerers is whatever crown they're wearing dictates how they behave. So each of the Glintstone crowns, they have a different shaped face. The Twin Sage has two faces. Um, and it has access to some slightly stronger spells. It has slightly more HP. Um, generally more troublesome to deal with, especially if they come in groups. So just be wary that the Twin Sage ones are a little bit tougher than their uh, counterparts. Yeah. Um, we also picked up the Lucerne there from those enemies outside the... It's kind of a bunch of enemies fighting, so we picked up the Lucerne. We've got a couple other things. I think there's a Golden Rune amongst there as well. So Lucerne, cool item. Um, also, just quickly to mention, here is another... Uh, Scarab that we did approach from the ball side, as is recommended, but the ass slam wasn't enough to kill it. But it is a dropping a Somber Smith in Stone too. Um, now, I think the reason why I don't have that that particular sorcerer um, in terms of the enemies is it's just one of them, so I probably overlooked it. But they can drop the like the they can drop the robes and they can drop their headpiece uh, and the no they don't they, no you pick the headpiece up separately actually but they can drop the robes the robes and the staff so yeah I mean that's pretty much it so we're coming to the start of this um, this broken bridge and from here um, we are just going to grab a couple of items and then return back there um, there's no just sort uh, of cleaning up the last items in this area so we don't have to backtrack and grab these later. Yeah, that's essentially it, because you, there's, we don't, there, there's no um, elegant way of coming back here in terms of the path that we take, so we're just, okay, we're, we're here now, we're just going to get the item, and then that's it, you know. So essentially we're following this cliff edge around until we get to this kind of gazebo thing with, I don't know, fucking poison anuses or whatever the fuck they are, and then we're getting a somber smith, we're getting a, a smith and stone too, and then heading back the way we came, effectively, like, Nice and easy. Can't really this is. Is. <laughs> what? So these yeah. enemies are called land squirts. It's not That's much It's actually better. worse. That's like a worse yeah, name. <laughs> um, you do get a land squirt spirit ash um, eventually. And I know that sounds awful, uh, to be honest. But it does have some niche uses. Um, weirdly enough, against some pretty tough bosses otherwise. Like... Um, you can just see higher to there briefly, um, but yeah, like so um, so, sorry, sorry, we picked up a strip of white flesh under the bridge, and then I think there's a rune arc. No, nope, it's a silver pickled foul foot on that little uh, encampment. But otherwise, I think that's it for the kind of wrapping up the items in this area. Yeah, the land squirt spirit ash when we do eventually get that. I mean, I'll go into a bit more detail there and then, but it can actually make one of the mid-game bosses hilariously easy because they can poison things and they have a lot of health. So they can just keep its aggro forever until it dies. So, turn it to night time and again, ugh, the worst part of the game, we are fighting the Black Riders. Now again, to reiterate every single time, you can come back, you can, you can fight this thing later when we have the stuff to make it easier. This is just a way of dealing with it just now, but um, when you get the lightning bolt ash of war and a shield with more stability you can come back here and fight these things far far easier because they're weak to lightning and um you know they move about a lot but the lightning bolt ash of war will just lock onto them and just you know keep peppering them with the damage that they can't avoid but otherwise uh the technique is to just get your shield up and not be greedy i am being greedy i'm telling you right now that the current gameplay that you're seeing is of me being greedy but Otherwise, you just wait for an attack, either block it, move away, dodge, whatever you want, and just hit them when the obvious openings are obvious. That's pretty much the technique for these guys. Because they just move about too much that, like, they just, you just can't get a solid strategy on them. Even Lion's Claw isn't good because they still dodge the Lion's Claw. So, aye. Lightning Bolt. It is good versus Tree thing. Sentinels, though. And you'll see that in action. Yeah. Bafflingly, yes. There's two different distinctions of, like, horsed, horsed enemy. Lion's Claw, incredible against the Tree Sentinels. Fucking terrible against these guys. Um, but if you can knock this guy off the horse and you do get the crit, you are going to be doing a lot of damage. So that's nice. But uh, otherwise, the strategy is don't get greedy. 
just get a buff on your weapon and hit him. But the actual, actual strategy is to just wait until you have the correct materials to make these guys nice and trivial. So we picked up Ice, um, ice Spear, the yes, Ash of War, did. from uh, from defeating that Knight's Cavalry. Now, if you're using a Spear-type weapon, so be it a Halberd, um, a Spear, a Great Spear, Ice Spear can go on it if it has thrusting damage. Um, and that Ash of War is great. Its stance damage is great, it builds up Frostbite, it has a decent amount of range. Not a ton of range, but good enough. Um, yeah, all round, awesome. Ash of War, it's just we never make use of a weapon that can make use of the Ash. Not really. Um, so coming up can here. Follow the, way we're the, the way we came up here. Um, and there is a Starlight Shard. Yeah. And I think a little bit further on, we'll be encountering the second Tibia Mariner. Yes. Um, and here you can also summon D for this boss. Um, it's kind of don't really recommend it because D will increase the amount of health that this guy has. And if we have Sacred Blade on a weapon, which is nice because we do, because we fought that Black Knight and it's just a decent, it's just a decent weapon buff overall. But Sacred Blade will make the Tibia Mariners a lot easier because you do a lot of damage because they're insanely weak to Sacred Blade or specifically holy damage. But as you can see, that's a good chunk that we're doing in the katanas. Hits fast, so bang. That's more than half its health gone in one little flurry of attacks. And you wouldn't get that if you'd summon D. Now, Similar there's a bunch of skeletons here. Um, oh, so this is kind of the skeletons I'm talking about. Now, the, as far as I'm aware, these ones won't drop any items. Um, but there's a the Tibia Manor gone. But basically, the skeletons that have the scythe can drop the scythe. Um, the skeletons that have... Uh, it might, it might be the glaive. No, it's not the glaive. They can't drop the scythe, actually. But the ones that have the glaive can drop the glaive, rather. Oh, they can drop the scythe! Never mind. <laughs> Fuck, sorry. Sorry, Jesus Christ. Um, so, picking up this Smith and Stone 3. I think this is one of the first Smith and Stone 3s we get so far. You um, get a couple of them in Stormvale Castle as well, and we did grab both. There's one on the way to the face of Godwin at the bottom, and there is one being guarded by the three eagles. So, that guy that we just passed there is one of the cuckoo... Well, actually, he's not that guy isn't a cuckoo knight. That's a Lindell knight. Um, which is significantly harder than the Cuckoo Knights. So heading that up to works. this artist shack, next to this, uh, next to the Grace, we'll get the painting. And um, now, again, as I said, that is a Lindell Knight, not a Cuckoo Knight. So he is a way higher level enemy. Probably scaled down a bit for this part of the game, but still is going to be proportionally harder than the Cuckoo Knights that you'd fight in this area. So we're picking up that Smith and Stone 4 on the chair, and bit of an editing thing we're just back at the grace that we were just at because um the first take of this i forgot to take sacred blade off now if you're fighting that thing with sacred blade you're gonna have a bad time but if you're fighting this thing with a slam it's you're gonna have a lovely magical experience um you're gonna finish he's gonna finish it's gonna be great for both of you um but what you're gonna do is you're or gonna a run cigarette a afterward it. yeah yeah <laughs> So as you can see, Again, that this... had to be a backstab done fuck all to him. So you need to be timing these ground slams well in order to kill him. And when I'm telling you, this is... Part, a backstab's a great opportunity to queue up a ground slam. Yeah. So... Now for killing him... Point. For killing him, you get the Dragon Cult prayer book. Again, we're going to be giving that to the turtle guy later on in the game. But, uh, in the next part, actually, we're going to be giving it to him. But, um, yeah, so that's what you do with the Dragon Cult, Cult Prayer Book. You will get spells if you give it to the total guy. He'll have, he'll, it will expand his inventory of spells. Um, but we're not going to tell you what he would drop. He can drop the Lindell Knight stuff. Um, all the knights of the respective areas have very, very similar drops. So we don't need to go into too much depth about it, because they all basically drop the same shit but just, like, coded for that area, I guess. But um, the point is, is that because there's only one of them, it's not really a viable farming place. So it's not really even worth talking about what he drops currently. So we're dropping down these uh, gravestones, and now we're at Jarburg after picking up that Smith and Stone 3. Is this where we're going to initiate the Jarbens quest? I think we do. I think we do. Uh, before that, we'll be going around first. and... Aye. Yeah. Aye. 
We'll be heading over to another mass grave over here. There's going to be a bunch of runes. There's a few cracked parts. There's a few ritual parts. Now, those are less common to find than the cracked parts, but they uh, give you access to stronger throwables than the uh, regular cracked parts will give you. Yeah, um, yeah. This is also a place where you can get a bunch of quite rare flowers. They all seem to grow here. Um, and so for you craft fairly regularly and they well. do respawn yeah um but i the the, the jar ben he's sitting on a staircase over there um when you speak to him you'll have to rest at a grace and speak to him and rest at a grace and speak to him uh until he's repeating his dialogue and that's really all you can do with him for the time being he's tied to alexander's quest whom and... we met in limgrave and dialos who we also met in the first part yeah, at this point though, Dialos should have teleported or moved to whatever. Um, should have moved to a place in Lyarnia, which we will. Um, I think we speak to him either in the next part. There's quite a lot of parts. It'll be either the next part or one of the next Lyarnia parts. Anyway, Lyarnia is quite big, so um, in one of them. Anyway, so we're just going about grabbing all the items that are in here. We picked up. I think it was a ritual pot and like three cracked pots. Um, so quite, it's definitely worthwhile coming here, actually. So here's Jarburn, um, just exhaust his dialogue like any other NPC until he is, um, I think he might, yeah, either goes to sleep or until he just starts repeating his dialogue is essentially it. Yeah, I mean, he has a couple of little different interactions if you visit him at varying points. Um, he talks to you about his uncle Alexander, he talks to you about becoming the potentate, um, of Jarberg, which you can't do. Somebody else does that. The Alos does that. And for completing his quest um, at the very end of the game, pretty much, you get the companion jar talisman, which yeah. boosts the strength of your jar throwables, which is quite nice. Now, it really bugged me that the companion jar didn't, like, if you have it as a talisman, it just gave you a little jar guy that would, like, fight alongside you. <laughs> I'm so pissed that that isn't what it does. Like a permanent spirit ash of yeah. just one of these little pot guys. I mean, that would have been cool. It could be that, like, that. if it's kind of like Ring of Favor and Protection, if you ever take it off, the pot shatters, and you can't get it again. Oh, it could have been like um, Gower's Ring of Protection. You've got a little pot guy on your back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but as you can see, we are literally just uh, speaking to him and... Like speaking to him and uh, resting and speaking to him until eventually he's just saying the same shit. And then once we finish that, I think that'll be us for part seven. Uh, yes, that is that is it. That is it for part seven because uh, the next the next part is like the top half of this side of the map essentially. And okay, there we go. That's Leonia East part one done. Join us in part six where we're going to be doing Leonia East part two. Now, other than liking and subscribing, you can follow us on Twitter. You can also follow us on Twitch, where we will be streaming once the DLC is out. And if you're feeling especially generous, you can sling us some cash on Patreon if you're so inclined. But the best thing you can do is just comment anything. Just comment anything. Go on. Anything. Two seconds. Go on. Anyway, catch you in the next part.